does Joe Biden feel about running against Donald Trump for the second time? ABC's David Muir asked him that question, but before we get to his answer, is Biden planning on running again in 2024? Let's watch. Uh, you said you would absolutely serve eight years if elected. Do you plan to run for re-election? Yes, but look, I'm a great respecter of fate. Fate has intervened in my life many, many times. If I'm in the health I'm in now, if I'm in good health, then in fact, I would run again. So let's talk about that before we get to his feelings about running against Trump again. Um, I mean, on one hand, I get it. What else are Democrats gonna do? Are they gonna have Pete Buttigieg run? Oh, by the way, yes, but you keep going. I mean, I think that they, you know, played around with that idea, but really, Pete Buttigieg? No, they believe Pete Buttigieg would win easily. They're, then why don't they have Pete Buttigieg run? They might. Oh, fascinating. <laughs> okay, they, I don't think they're going to have Biden's transportation secretary run against Biden during no, the No, no, not run against Biden. Oh, I see. You mean it sometime yeah. in the future. So uh, my thoughts on this are, is Biden uh, definitely going to say that he's going to run? Absolutely. Why? Not just because he is obsessed with ego and power and like all politicians are. And of course, you're going to have to rip that power away from, anyway, you get it. Uh, you know how the old saying goes. Uh, but also because he would become a lame duck president instantly. If he said, I'm not running again, he instantly loses power. He doesn't lose power three years from now, he loses power today. So he has to give that answer to be fair to Biden, either way, okay? But the second part of it is, yeah, you know, a couple of years down the line when they have to make the decision, in about a year and a half or so, uh, the actual people in power, which are the big Democratic donors, are gonna get in a room probably at some fancy French restaurant in Northern California or New York. Ah, right? The kingmakers will choose their next king. Yes, no, that's exactly right. The oligarchs will get together mm -hmm. and they'll choose the next king. And that's how they chose Kamala Harris as his VP. That's how they chose Biden to, once they thought Bernie was gonna win. And and those guys, those kingmakers, the, the wealthy Democratic donors, they live in their bubble. And in their bubble, Buttigieg is the most popular person in America because they all love him. They're like, oh, this guy would give us everything and he I think we think he's really smart in hiding how corrupt he is. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> if that at that point a year and a half from now they think Biden's going to lose, they're going to start nudging him out and then and they had been in love with Kamala Harris for a long time and we told you about that like 5 years ago, right? That they were going to pick her and they did. It's just that she ran such an incompetent campaign for president, they had to make her vice president. But now the big donors have soured on Kamala Harris. And part of the reason for that is because she's not taking enough of their calls as VP. So all of this is sickening. And that's the game that's actually being played while David Muir plays fantasy land on television with him, right? He never he doesn't ask him the real questions. Right. Yeah, David Muir hasn't sat down to think about all of these moving parts. And he certainly isn't thinking about kingmakers ever. As, as people in corporate media typically avoid ever thinking about. Um, but look, my prediction is this, and it's based on nothing but a gut feeling and the fact that ego is a big part of what motivates people in politics. I think that Biden's gonna run again, and I think there's a pretty decent chance that he's gonna lose. And why do I say that? As we know, there have been several polls coming out lately indicating that his approval rating is pretty low, record lows. Um, for instance, uh, a new NPR PBS uh, NewsHour Marist poll found that Biden's approval rating has sunk to 41%, a historic low for the president in polls conducted by the groups. 55% of adults in the United States disapprove of the job Biden is doing as president. Um, his approval rating was actually 42% uh, earlier this month on December 6th. Uh, so it has gone down just a little bit. Uh, and when broken down by party, remember the independents are the ones that you want to, you know, capture. And 29% of these independents polled said that they strongly approve or approve of Joe Biden's uh, of the job that Biden is doing, while 66% said that they strongly disapprove or uh, disapprove. So things aren't looking good for Biden, and it might have to be, it might have something to do with the fact that he doesn't really look like a leader when. 
there's a senator who's essentially taking charge and blocking his whole agenda. And Biden doesn't even really fight back at all. He yeah. just kind of lets it happen. So I, I think that there's at least three realities in America. Uh, there's the right wing reality, which in this case is not relevant. There's establishment uh, Washington mentality, and then there's the rest of us, okay? And in uh, Washington, they think his numbers are that low because he was mean to Manchin, uh, he didn't compromise enough, uh, and inflation has gone up because he passed too many bills to help the American people. Great, he should take their advice and see how it works out for well, him. Well, he has taken their advice and this is how it has worked out for him, okay? So the rest of us see profound weakness and we don't, it's hard to root for a leader who A, hasn't gotten anything done and B, it is just gets pushed around by everyone. And so that's apparent to all of you. That's why I'm telling you the Washington point of view because they live in a different planet and it, my guess is it, surprise, it would surprise you to find out. And for them, they think they don't believe me. They think you all think that Biden is too strong, too progressive, etc. And I mean that's a joke, but that's that's the world that they live in. So that that's the dynamics of that. And look, I don't blame Biden for running again if he's okay. He's president, etc. I blame him for sucking at his job yes. and and putting us in a situation where the Democratic candidate, whether it's him. Or someone that they insert in a panic who's going to be just as corrupt and just as establishment as him is almost certainly going to lose to a Republican. That's now he could change all that. He's only a year in. It's not a fait accompli. And we we're not like we're not naturally biased against Biden as in, oh my God, we want him to do poorly so that a Republican will have a chance of winning. No, I don't want a Republican having any chance of winning, right? So I would I would love it if he turned around and he broke Manchin's kneecaps and got Build Back Better passed and voting rights passed, etc. But you know he's going to do a quarter of that, and they're going to try to do marketing around that pig and, and put some lipstick on it, and it's not going to work. No, and then they'll not. blame us. I mean, we've seen this movie a thousand times. A thousand times, absolutely, and. Uh I think you're actually being generous in saying that he's gonna get a quarter of that agenda done. He's not even gonna get that done. In fact, I mean, you've seen some acts of desperation from the Biden administration just this week, where the Biden administration said, no, we're gonna make students you know, start paying back their student loans on February 1st, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And then of course, Manchin blocks his agenda. And they're like, yeah, um, we're going to, it uh, turns out we're gonna actually extend it to May. Uh, and look, give us a pat on the back, aren't we doing so great? Uh, the fact that the Biden administration agreed to give out 500,000 COVID tests after Jen Psaki totally bungled a question in regard to COVID tests earlier this month. And so you're seeing these acts of desperation, but it's so reminiscent of the Obama administration where he campaigned on such fundamental change. I mean, Biden didn't do that. But Biden, in the beginning of his presidency, did put out pretty robust policy and expectations were pretty high, especially for someone like Biden. And just like Obama, he bungled it and decided to you know, do little things around the edges with the hope that it would have enough of an impact to get his approval rating up, but that hasn't happened. Now let's get to the Trump question. How does he feel about running against Trump? The rematch against Donald Trump? You're trying to tempt me now. <laughs> sure. Why would I not run against Donald Trump for the nominee? That increased the prospect of running. Yeah, I don't. I don't find that surprising at all. Uh, and that's a perfectly fine answer. What was he going to do? Oh, Trump's running. <laughs> but then I don't want to run. <laughs> I mean, like I think the question is actually kind of absurd. But he knew that it would get headlines, and it did. So. And here we are covering it, to be fair to David Muir, right? Uh, but of course, he's gonna say that's gonna make it more likely to run. And I, if I was Biden, I would have rubbed it in more. I'm like, well, I beat him already by seven million votes. That gives me some degree of confidence. That would be base. Like if he like really rubbed in the fact yeah. that he beat Trump, especially because Trump is still like in a corner crying about losing the election and trying to find any excuse for, for how, no, no, I actually won. I actually won, even though we did multiple recounts in states like Georgia where I lost, I actually won. I mean, it's it's embarrassing, so uh, it'd be I, fun. I, I would actually have a tiny, tiny bit more respect for Biden if he was willing to like rub it in. Oh, 100%, and, but 
not just because it's fun or it's a nice way to vent and ha ha Trump, but it's also could be strategic. You say, hey, listen, I beat the guy by seven million votes. You can cry all day long about electoral college and this and that, but seven million votes is seven million votes. And so that's an ass whooping. So if he'd like that again, I'm here for him, okay? So now, why do I say that's strategic? Because then I guarantee you that Trump will pretend that the margin was actually of cheating was over 7 million votes, which is even more preposterous, right? So right now, it is true that actually Biden only won by 43,000 votes in three states because of the Electoral College. The popular vote he won overall in the country by 7 million votes. So it was actually a very close election, but not in the popular vote. And so if you rub it into Trump, instead of Trump pretending that there was they cheated by 43,000 votes, He'll then start pretending that they cheated by 8 million, 10 million, 100 million votes, right? Mm -hmm. And he'll look more and more ridiculous. So, yeah. but Biden couldn't begin to understand strategy like that of his life, depending on it. This is beside the point, but let's just agree moving forward that we're more careful with our wording because the phrase rub it into Trump makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> I feel violated right now. I, okay. <laughs> I right. got nothing to say about that. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.